I'm Brian Bellendorf. I'm executive director of Hyperledger, a collaborative project hosted at the Linux Foundation. We are a group of technologists and of companies and other organizations who have come together to build open source software that serves as building blocks for building your own blockchain, for building distributed ledgers and smart contract systems uh, that touch all sorts of different sectors and use cases. My role as executive director of Hyperledger is to essentially serve as a geek diplomat. Uh, I try to connect two different kinds of communities. The developers who come for many different reasons together to work on the software and to figure out how, what sort of governance do we use? What sort of uh, uh, projects do we build? How do we really work together to make sure that everybody's time is well spent and that we're creating software that enterprises want to use, that people can build businesses on top of? And then the second layer of diplomacy that I do is between the companies in our community, uh, the ones who are members of Hyperledger and, and beyond, to help them understand how do these tools work and how can they all be competitive with each other or build their own businesses but still work together on a common technology layer. And a lot of that is going out and helping explain to the world, help the world understand what we build, how we work, and why actually sometimes how you build software is more important than what you're building. The benefit of working with Hyperledger is that you're tapping into a community of technology experts, of companies that are building real shipping products that are incorporating this common technology, right? So when you are working on, on a blockchain technology project that involves plugging into a, a supply chain effort or into a banking network, and those networks are already using Hyperledger technology, these are tools to be able to bootstrap and connect in and, uh, and operate directly on those, on those technology projects. But it also, for these companies, gives them a layer of independence. You can hire an IBM to help you build a blockchain technology project. You could hire a startup to help you build it. Uh, but ultimately, the software is open source, and so you have the ability to choose other vendors, in fact, multiple different vendors, even on the same stack, to get some real competition going. And then finally, none of this technology requires the use of a, of a token or an ICO to be able to get started. You know, it's a new kind of database, right? It's, uh, something that uh, we didn't have before, which is a community database. You could think of it like the Wikipedia even, you could think of it like other types of common uh, systems, but it it's inherits from the public blockchain space a lot of new understanding about how to decentralize trust. And so we really want to make this part of the plumbing of the world, and, and really the way that the world is reinvented to be more transparent, more auditable, and more fair. Hyperledger ensures that its community is productive uh, in a number of ways. The first is we all work publicly, right? Uh, there, there's a lot of times when technology, like the, the model of that is three people in a room and they enter and like work on a weekend and then come out with something brilliant. And occasionally that happens, but most of the time in software, it's a process. It's an ongoing thing. It's much more like a river than it is a reservoir, right? All of the Hyperledger technology projects, whether it's Fabric or Sawtooth or Indy or Aroha, all of them work publicly. And that means the developers talking with each other and engaging with each other on which bug should we fix, what's the next version going to have from a feature perspective, I've got an idea that does this. And that degree of transparency and public collaboration ensures high productivity, uh, it ensures there's less uh, chance of a big architectural mistake from being made, and it also helps ensure that any technology that it lands, uh, you don't have to depend just on one company to be able to deliver. So it's decentralization, but in a very different form than I think most people in the blockchain space uh, tend to think of. We have 10 ongoing projects at Hyperledger, and for us, project is more of a term for, again, these streams of activity that um, might never end. These 10 different projects uh, run the gamut from industrial grade project platforms that are being used today in blockchain technology projects such as Hyperledger Fabric and Hyperledger Sawtooth. These are two different ways of building uh, distributed ledgers. They're kind of different in the same way that, say, MySQL and Cassandra are different uh, for the developers out there. These are just 
just two different tools in the toolbox. To a project like Hyperledger Indie, which is focused on doing identity networks in a very decentralized way. It's, a, you know, instead of logging with Facebook, logging with Twitter, this is about reinventing how identity works online to be much more personal and much more about a wallet that you have as an interface to a world of digital assets. To other technology projects like Hyperledger Burrow, which is an implementation of the Ethereum smart contract engine, which is a way for us to be able to build a bridge with that community and say, take your Solidity smart contracts and run them on a private network and get a lot of the same advantages and a lot of the same flexibility, even in a world where you're dealing with real assets and with real enterprise needs. So lots of different things. It's kind of like a greenhouse is the metaphor that we use. Lots of different flowers blooming in different places. And our job is to help cultivate these, help make sure they're well nourished, and ultimately to help make sure they're creating things of value for the rest of the world. So the vision for blockchain technology that I and many others in the Hyperledger community share is one of many different chains, many different ledgers working together around the world. You'll have some ledgers that are very public facing, like the cryptocurrency ledgers. Others though that are very private, you know, a few banks here, a few other participants on a supply chain here, and others that are halfway in between, say very much like uh, uh, identity networks or the domain name system, or think of it like, like Ripple and some of these other kind of architectures to right with verified nodes and we think it's going to be uh, really useful and in fact really important to have the software that underpins all these ledgers to be as common and standardized as possible for much the same reason that the Linux operating system has served as this common underlying framework for everything from Android phones to supercomputers to software in cars and behind the web uh, and so working together if we can build this common plumbing this common infrastructure for uh, blockchain technology I think will help the whole sector, the whole industry, move together further and faster.